What we're going to be going over here is cash flow for financing activities and we're going to be specifically looking at cash dividends paid. Now the cash flow for any cash dividends paid, it's going to involve both liabilities and stockholders equity here on our balance sheet. So when we're talking about cash flow, it's really for the cash flow statement. Now remember the cash flow statement includes an investing activities section. Uh, financing activities section and also operating activities. But for our discussion here, these cash dividends paid, that's going to fall under this financing activities. So what we have to do here, I've got it laid out in template form here. What we're going to do here is, uh, for our example, we're going to have to determine what the dividends declared is here. Typically you'd know what the dividends declared is, but for our, our understanding here, these uh, cash dividends paid, we're going to uh, go with the premise here that we have to determine what the cash dividends declared is. So remember any dividends declared here uh, is a, a re directly reduces our retained earnings or our shareholders equity. So the dividends account here acts as a contract account here to our retained earnings. And our retained earnings here falls under earned capital here for any stockholders equity. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do here to determine those dividends declared, we have to know what's going on in our retained earnings account here. So we're gonna have to determine what we have in our retained earnings account. And then based on that, we can determine what our dividends declared is for this example. So uh, first off, our retained earnings, that for the period here, that's gonna be increased here for any net income here coming off our in our net income statement. Net income is gonna be increased or gonna be transferred to our retained earnings. It's gonna increase our retained earnings. So again, remember net income is our revenues less our expenses here uh, on our income statement. Okay, so once we know what's sitting here in our retained earnings, we'll be able to determine what our dividends declared is. Once we know what our dividends declared is, then we can move it over into our dividends payable here as a liability account. And then once we know that, then we're gonna be able to determine the change in cash. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at our, our calculations. Okay, so first here for the cash dividends for those uh, cash payments here for those dividends that are going to be paid, it's going to become a two-step process here because we're going to have to determine first what the dividends declared is, and then once we know that, then we can determine what the dividends payable is, and then we're going to be able to determine what the cash payment is. Okay, so first for our step one here in our two-step process. We're gonna to have to determine what's going on in our retained earnings here to determine what our de dividends declared is. So remember, retained earnings is an equity account here. I got it laid out in T account form here. Debits reduce our retained earnings, credits here in increase our retained earnings. And then once we determine what our dividends declared is, we're gonna move it into our dividends payable here. Now remember, dividends payable here is a liability account versus our retained earnings, which is an equity account. Same uh, format here. T account form here, again, because it's sitting here as on our uh, liabilities here on uh, side of our uh, accounting equation here, debits reduce our dividends payable, credits increase our dividends payable. So just so we got that understanding here. Okay, so moving over to our retained earnings account here. Uh, what we would have to know here We'd have to know what the beginning amount in our retained earnings is. And let's say it says 182,000, everything is in thousands of dollars. Then we'd have to know what's coming into a retained earnings for the period here from our income statement. Let's say it's 62,000 here. So knowing those amounts, we also know what the ending amount is in our retained earnings. And let's say it's 208,000. So based on our beginning amount here, 182,000 plus our increase here due to net income of 62,000. What would that be? 144,000 or 244,000. We know what our ending amount is at 208,000. So the only thing that can reduce our uh, retained earnings would be the dividends declared. Remember, that's a contract account. Would be our dividends declared would be increased it would directly reduce our retained earnings. So that would debit or reduce our retained earnings. So here we can calculate our dividends declared here as a balancing amount. 244,000 here, uh, beginning 
plus the increase for the period here, less our ending amount here at 208,000 is going to give us a balancing amount here of 36,000 for the dividends declared. So there's how you calculate your dividends declared. Okay, so now we know what our dividends declared is. We can move it into our dividends payable. So step two of uh, to determine our cash payments, this is where we can actually determine the cash paid. So for dividends payable, again, same a, a same reasoning here. A beginning balance here of 10,000 uh, for the period here. Then that dividends declared, we would credit that or increase our dividends payable for the $36,000 amount. Now we know what our ending amount would be in our dividends payable, say that's 16,000. So you can just net it out here, determine the balancing amount that would go to cash. So let's look at that here. So beginning amount, uh, 10,000 plus 36,000 here for the dividends declared. That's 46, uh, 46,000 here, and then the ending amount here, we have to get down to 16,000. So the only way we could, that would give us a $30,000 difference here. The only way you can do that here is uh, uh, cash. What you would uh, reduce it here for the cash payment. So you debit or reduce your dividends payable here by 30,000, and then you'd credit your cash or reduce your cash. So here's how we calculated our cash here to be 30,000. So we had a reduction here in our dividends payable of $30,000. So what that is telling us, that's the cash used for the financing activity. That would be a cash use. So we would have used up cash here uh, for that dividends pay or that dividend that we paid out here by 30,000. So you can see uh, our, how we had to go through this two-step process here. We first had to determine what our dividends declared is based on our retained earnings account beginning amount plus comes in for the period, what we had to end up with. So a balancing amount uh, would go into the dividends declared, in this case, the 36,000. We know what our dividends declared is, then we move that into dividends payable for the period here. Again, go through the same um, calculations here where you know what your beginning amount, what your uh, dividend declared is, you add that to it, you end up, you know what your ending amount would be for the period, in this case it was that 16000 here. So the only way you can reduce your dividends payable is the cash. So here's what we determine what goes into the cash flow statement under financing activities or, and it would be listed as uh, financing activity and it would be a reduction to our our cash account here and that would be cash used. Okay, so that'll end our discussion here with this really two-step process here when we had to uh, first determine what our dividends declared is to determine what our change in cash would be.